For this video, I'm going to be going over my Neon Tetra vs Guppies comparison. Both of these fish are commonly recommended to beginners who are new to the hobby. I've kept both of these in my tanks for around 3 months now, and I want to share my experiences and thoughts to hopefully help other people work out the best fish for their needs. So starting with the appearance and varieties, when it comes to guppies, there are a ton of strains out there, there really are, you can get pretty much any colour pattern or tail shape that you want these days. But I am a huge fan of cobra or snake skin guppies. When it comes to the size of the guppies, the males are around 1.5 inches when fully grown, whereas the females can be as much as twice the size of the males. But most females will max out at between 2 and 2.5 inches in size. There really isn't much variety with neon tetras. There are various other types of tetra you can go to that are different sizes or have their own colours and patterns. But when focusing specifically on neon tetras, you're going to have that blue and red look that they are so well known for. Thankfully it is a great look and their blue and red colours definitely pop well in planted tanks against live green plants or dark substrate or dark bog wood. In the right lighting, neon tetras really do look amazing. When it comes to the size of neon tetras, both males and females are going to max out at around the 1.5 inch mark. Moving on to lifespan of the fish and I definitely wanted to include this section because I truly think that fish should be bought as long term pets, not short term decorations. But the problem with lifespan is there are a number of different variables that come into it. The breeding lines for your fish will factor in, their diet, their water temperature, their water parameters, there are a ton of different things out there. But with guppies you're looking at between 2 and 5 years, for most people it's going to be closer to the 2 to 3 years in my opinion. Most guppies are heavily inbred these days to try and promote the best colours, patterns and tail shapes out there and this does have consequences. Not only does this make guppies more susceptible to various diseases but it can also weaken their resistances when treating the diseases. With neon tetras you are going to be looking at between four and eight year but this will depend on if your neon tetra is wild or domestic. Wild caught neon tetras although rare these days can live far longer than domestically bred neon tetras. Here in the United Kingdom we are definitely restricted towards the domestically bred neon tetra. That comes from fish farms in East Eastern Europe. And just like many popular fish, there is a lot of inbreeding with neon tetras as well, so they also have the same issue as guppies, so you're going to be looking towards the four to five year point with a domestically bred neon tetra. Moving on to the stocking levels, and there's a lot of variables that come into this one. If you want a rough guide, go to ACK Advisor. I'll link to it in the video description. It's a free stocking calculator that you can use. But one thing to note is that both guppies and neon tetras are social fish in my experience. Most people know that about neon tetras but a lot of people don't know that about guppies. A lot of my guppies like to be around other guppies a lot of the time when they're in my tanks. But some guppies can be kept solo with minimal issues. I know a few people who do it. I've seen people on YouTube, Reddit and social media who keep guppies as a solo pet. But I personally do want multiple guppies. I just think all the different colours and all the movement looks really cool. There are also various strategies with intentionally slightly overstocking your tank which is what I did to try and help minimise aggression between the male guppies and it did work. I saw a lot of people on YouTube recommending it as a quick and easy way to stop male aggression in all male guppy tanks. So depending on the number of live plants and the type of filter you're using, you may be able to do something like that where you heavily stock your tank intentionally. When it comes to stocking neon tetras, most people recommend the minimum of six fish that's always battered around. I have 10 neon tetras in my 29 gallon tank and they look great, they really do. I've been to a few different local fish stores where they have a lot more than 10 neon tetras in their tank. And one thing that I would say in my opinion is that the more neon tetras you have in the tank, the better the look. But most people do recommend you keep at least six because they are more social and they do like to show up and group if they get spooked or scared. So moving on to tank requirements and guppies are quite versatile to be honest. But seriously fish do have a minimum tank size recommendation of 18 inches by 12 by 12 or 45 centimeters by 30 by 30 with rectangular tanks being recommended by most most people for guppies. In my tank my guppies really did use all three layers of the water column, they'd be at the top, middle and bottom layers. But you always want the best for your fish so the biggest possible tank you can afford will always be the best option. When it comes to neon tetras, seriously fish recommends a minimum tank size of 24 inches by 12 by 12 or 60 centimeters by 30 by 30 with this tank needing to be a little bit bigger than the guppy tank. I think that the larger tank size is recommended for neon tetras because at least in my tank they are definitely more of a left to right 
right fish, where they swim horizontally through the middle of the water column, there's not much vertical movement going on with them, whereas the guppies really do just swim in any direction. But yeah, rectangle tank recommended, funny on Tetris as well. Moving on to health and disease, and unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, with due to inbreeding, both of these fish can have serious problems. A lot of the posts I found on social media tend to focus on the lack of natural resistance to various diseases that these fish have due to the inbreeding, but this can also make them weaker to the various treatments on the market for these diseases when you dose their tank with them. So yeah, that's definitely going to be a problem. Unfortunately, with my guppy 12 gallon tank, a fungal infection did somehow get in there and out of the guppies I had in there, only one is left. It was horrible watching my fish, doing everything I could to try and treat them with various antifungal meds and seeing them pass one by one and just feeling totally helpless. It was horrible. And even the one guppy that's still in that tank does not look 100% and I'm not sure he's going to make it. So yeah, it's a horrible, horrible thing. It really is. Thankfully, my neon tetras don't really seem to have many issues. One thing I would say is one of them does have a bent spine that could be due to inbreeding, but there are a few other issues out there. Unfortunately, this does seem to be common these days with neon tetras though. There's also neon tetra disease, which I don't think this bent spine's got anything to do with. I've A lot of the reports I've seen on Reddit and social media about neon tetra disease basically says look for the lack of colour or the guppies starting to turn white as your primary indicator of the disease. So moving on to behaviour and temperament and although I did move my guppies to their own dedicated tank there was a time where my guppies and neon tetras were both in my community tank together and right off the bat I just want to quickly say I never saw my guppies or my neon tetras show any aggression at all to any other fish species in the tank or any of the shrimp but I have seen aggression from both guppies and neon tetras to other fish of the same species. Like I mentioned earlier, I ended up having to overstock my guppy tank to calm the aggression in there. It wasn't all male tank, and there was a very, very aggressive guppy in there that would just tail fan, chase, and nip the other guppies, but I increased the guppy count from three to eight, and that aggression stopped almost immediately. When it comes to the aggression I've seen with my neon tetras, it's usually the two biggest ones, which I'm presuming are male chasing a smaller one away whenever it comes nearer the group which I'm presuming is a smaller weaker male. The fish that chase away now basically just stays at one part of the tank so I'm target feeding him away from the rest of the fish. So yeah with both guppies and neon tetras there can be some species on species aggression but I've never ever witnessed anything towards any of the other species in the tanks. Moving on to the water parameter requirements and for the most part both guppies and neon tetras will do well in the generic tropical freshwater fish setup that most people will have. The only real point of of note that stands out for both species is their water hardness or their pH level. With guppies usually preferring harder water with a pH of 7 to 8.5 and neon tetras preferring softer water with a pH of 4 to 7.5 although I have seen other sources recommend a pH of 5.5 to 6.5 for neon tetras. So depending on your area and your budget available this might be a deciding factor for you. For example in my area in northern England we have very soft water right out of our a tap so I have to go out and buy additional products to increase the pH of my guppy tank just so my guppies are comfortable in there but this is not needed for neon tetras my tap water pH is fine I don't have to add anything else to try and increase or decrease the pH I can just put the neon tetras in there after removing chlorine and chloramines and hot heavy metals but one of my friends over in the United States lives in an area with very heavy water and it would be the opposite for him he'd be able to take guppies and put them into his tap water but if he wanted to keep neon tetras, he'd have to use a chemical to lower his pH to bring it within the suitable ranges for neon tetras. The products I use are from API, they're about $10, so they're not that expensive. But if you are looking for your very first fish and you are on a tight budget, this might be the deciding factor. If you live in an area with harder water, go with guppies. If you live in an area with softer water, go with neon tetras. So moving on to diet and feeding, and there's definitely a clear winner here in my experience. The guppies win by far. It's not even comparable. My guppies eat anything that I put in the tank. I constantly see them grazing on algae in their tank and they are constantly foraging for any leftover food any of their tank mates have missed. They've ate pretty much every single type of food I've tested with them to date without issue and the same can definitely not be said for my neon tetras. I mentioned this in a video a few days ago where my neon tetras and my chili rasboras were an absolute pain to find food that they would consistently and reliably eat and I even went as far as to buy specific 
Mike Food designed for Neon Tetris and a different type designed for Chili Rasboras. Thankfully, the Chili Rasboras ate that one without issue, but the Neon Tetras would swallow the one for them and then just spit the pellet back out and not eat it, and then the Corydoras on the substrate would eat it for them. But strangely enough, my Neon Tetras do seem to love bug bites from Fluval, but one problem with this is a lot of people say Neon Tetras only feed from the middle of the water column. In my experience, that's not being correct. I've seen my guppies consistently eat from the bottom of the tank but this might just be due to hunger because the fish don't go to the surface of the tank to feed on the bug bites while they're up there then they float through the water column quite quickly once they've taken on enough water so they follow them to the substrate and feed there but my neon tetras really have been a pain to get to consistently eat so again if you don't have the budget to go out and buy different types of fish food to try with your fish i'd recommend you go guppies they are so easy to feed they really are so moving on to breeding these fish and like i said earlier i've never kept female guppies i've never tried to breed either of these species so I will be just briefly touching on this but one thing I would say is I've lost count of the number of people who say guppies are one of the best beginner friendly fish if you want to do a breeding tank so purely on their recommendation I'd say go guppies if you are looking to breed your fish so moving on to cost and availability and every single fish store I've been in has had guppies and neon tetras in there so availability you should not have any issues both of these are definitely very very popular fish and I'd guess that both are in the top five of tropical freshwater fish and this is prices in the uk right now this will change in the future and in your local area it might be different so at the time of recording in the uk guppies are more expensive than neon tetras you can usually get a guppy for three pounds 49 in the shops this is pets at home which is the british version of PetSmart. but the thing with guppies is on ebay i can actually pay three pounds 30 for a very high grade strain guppy which is cheaper than a generic guppy in pets at home so neon tetras do definitely seem to be cheaper they are around two pound in pets at home but i have seen them on ebay for as low as one pound provided you take a certain number i got my 10 neon tetras for 10 pounds but i did have to take 10 so finishing the video with some recommendations but realistically it's going to depend on your budget and circumstances and preferences and most people will already know what they want at this point of the video but i love both fish but for most people i would recommend the guppy in all honesty yeah the guppy is more expensive at least here at a buy directly from the pet shop but keep in mind you can put two or three guppies in a tank and they'll be fine whereas most people recommend a minimum of six neon tetras personally i went for 10 a lot of people recommend that as well so just going with the 10 neon tetras pumps your cost up over going with two or three guppies like i mentioned earlier i really don't know how much money i spent on food for my neon tetras that they just didn't eat my corridors are very happy about that they eat anything but my wallet definitely isn't happy about that whereas my guppies will eat anything like i said they've ate all the foods that I put in there I often see them picking at bits of algae in their tank color selection is also definitely on the guppy side with neon tetras you're going to be stuck with the red and blue but I do love both fish like I mentioned earlier I currently have a 12 gallon guppy tank I definitely want to build a far bigger guppy tank but I still love my neon tetras especially in my community tank but in the future I am playing with the idea of a dedicated tetra tank with a couple of different types of tetra or just have an absolute ton of neon tetras in there but yeah if any of my friends or family came up to meet the day and said what should I go with guppy on the on tetra i'd go with guppy